If you're planning a trip to Machu Picchu and need an in-depth guide on how to get you there, then this seven-step guide is exactly what you need. We've been exploring the beautiful sites in and around Cusco for the past two months and wanted to share with you a detailed guide that will put your mind at ease and seamlessly get you from Cusco to Machu Picchu. So let's jump right in. Step one, getting to Cusco. Many people that are coming to Peru may spend time in Lima before heading off to Cusco to eventually explore the ancient ruins of Machu Picchu, but others may choose to continue directly onto Cusco if their time is limited, whether that's by plane, bus, or rental car. We booked an overnight bus with Cruz del Sur and it cost 65 Canadian per person and took roughly 23 hours, which included a flat tire change in the middle of the night. Even though the scenery was beautiful, I'm not sure I would do it again. By the end of the trip, we were ready to get off the bus. And for those that are curious, you can buy plane tickets for around the same price as an overnight bus and it'll get you there in one and a half hours. Step two, take time to acclimate. Cusco sits at 11,000 feet above sea level, so once you arrive in Cusco, I'd recommend taking at least one or two days to acclimate to Cusco's high altitude. If you have concerns of altitude sickness, there are many remedies such as Diamox medication and Sirochi pills that can easily be obtained at a plethora of pharmacies or boticas in Cusco. A more natural remedy is to drink coca tea, buy some coca candies, or if you're brave enough, you can just chew the coca leaves themselves. But always remember to drink lots of water because altitude is no joke. If your time in Cusco is short, I would recommend staying close to the historical center by the Plaza de Armas. Here you'll find plenty of hostels, hotels, and beautiful boutique B&Bs with endless options of food no matter what you prefer. Once you've settled into your accommodations, just take a leisure stroll in the square and soak up the sights and sounds, especially at night. It is absolutely beautiful. Number three, buy tickets in advance. If I could recommend buying anything in advance, it would be to book your Machu Picchu tickets early. They can sell out because they cap the amount of tickets sold each day, which can limit your options. Our tickets cost $56 per person, and those are the only tickets we purchased in advance, and then we booked the bus and train, and all other transportation once we arrived in Cusco. I will admit we did use a travel company to book our way to Machu Picchu, which was hassle-free and very easy, but you definitely do not have to use a tour company. There are two rail companies that will get you to Aguas Calientes before heading to Machu Picchu, Peru Rail and Inca Rail. We chose the Inca Rail company for our bus and train to Aguas Calientes. I will leave their website link and where they are located in Cusco in the description box below along with the official website for buying your Machu Picchu tickets. Step four, where to go. Over the next couple of days, your excitement will start to build and your Machu Picchu day will finally arrive. You will want to get to the bus station about 15 to 30 minutes before your departure time to get your ticket scanned in. Once it's time to head off, you'll be escorted to the minibus, which seats about 20 people. Then you'll be on your way to Olente Tambo to catch the train to Aguas Calientes. On our way to Olente Tambo, we made a quick stop at a viewpoint that overlooked the Sacred Valley. It felt like you could see forever. Like, look at those snow-capped mountains. After 90 minutes on the bus, you will finally arrive in Olente Tambo. Here, you'll be escorted to the train by Peruvian-dressed locals singing and dancing their way to your specific train car. Once you've arrived at your seat, settle in for some epic views. During our 90-minute ride, we were given a brief history lesson on the Incas, but my favorite part was the snow-capped mountains off in the distance. They were stunning. Just a quick note about the train, it was very comfortable and the staff from the Inca Rail Company stayed with you from the bus ride all the way through to the train station in Aguas Calientes. Step five, getting to Machu Picchu. Once you arrive in Aguas Calientes, you have a choice to stay here overnight or continue on to Machu Picchu the same day. I'd recommend staying at least one or two nights in Aguas Calientes. We love this quaint little town and we've created a detailed video on things to do while you're in Aguas Calientes that'll leave in the description box below. We found Machu Picchu bus tickets easy to acquire once we arrived in Aguas Calientes, but it's also something that you can book in advance to avoid the lineups. There weren't any lineups when we went, but we have read that it can get really busy, especially in the peak season, which is their dry season, from April to October. Keep in mind the temperatures in these months typically range from high 60s to low 30s at night. I'll leave the location on where to purchase the tickets in person in Aguas Calientes 
and also where to purchase them online in advance in the description box below. We ended up staying two nights in Aguas Calientes, so we didn't feel rushed to see Machu Picchu, which I think would make for a long day if you did the whole tour in one day. It can be done, but we just wanted to relax and just take our time. So we arrived in Aguas Calientes the day before we went to Machu Picchu and stayed at a great hotel called Samana Cheese, which is right next to the thermal pools, if that's something you're interested in. We decided to purchase round-trip bus tickets to Machu Picchu that cost 32 Canadian per person. But if you're feeling adventurous and enjoy a two to three hour challenge, you could hike to Machu Picchu and save yourself the cost of bus tickets or only hike one way if that's what you wish. Just keep in mind, you will need your physical passport to enter Machu Picchu and you are not allowed to enter Machu Picchu before the time on your ticket. The official website to buy your Machu Picchu tickets does an awesome job at explaining each circuit so go ahead and check that out in the description box below. Step six, hire a guide. This isn't something that is mandatory. However, I wanted to include it because we had such a great time with Carlos and we learned so much of the Inca history. We toured Machu Picchu for four hours and we didn't feel rushed at all. Not only was he our tour guide, but he's a stellar photographer as well. Step seven, getting back to Cusco. Once you've explored the ancient ruins of Machu Picchu and took your pictures with the llamas, it's time to make your way back to Cusco. And when you purchase your bus and train tickets from Cusco to Aguas Calientes, you can decide at that time if you want to do round trip, stay overnight in Aguas Calientes, or maybe even stay a night in Olente Tambo. There are so many choices and it all depends on how much time you have and how much you want to see and do. We decided to stay a couple of nights in Olente Tambo and had a great time and ate some fantastic food. Staying in Olente Tambo is something I would highly recommend if you have the time. But if you don't, I'll link the Lost in Olente Tambo adventures down below in case you are wondering what it's like in and around this beautiful little town. If you do want to stay in Olente Tambo overnight, that video also has information on how to arrange transportation back to Cusco. Spoiler alert, it's easy not to worry. If you're short on time and end up doing the whole trip from Cusco to Machu Picchu on the same day, just make your way back to the train station 30 minutes before your departure time and you'll get back to Cusco without any problems. Machu Picchu has been on my bucket list for a long time and when I first started looking at ways to get to Machu Picchu, it seemed very overwhelming. With all the Moza transportation, all the little towns and stops along the way, but I hope this video made it a little easier and a little more clear in the seven steps I presented in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful in any way, tell me by hitting that like button. Subscribe if you're interested in coming to Peru because we have a lot more fun things planned, like our hike to Awesome Gate, which you can check out here. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.